The width tool is used for detecting the distance between two edges based off contrast in the image. It compares this width to the width of the master image and gives a matching rate percentage. The matching rate can be scaled to display a measurement value in millimeters. Note, this is not a measurement tool, but used for detecting between different sized parts or OK no good parts. Let's go through an example. I'm going to use this width tool simulator file to walk through step by step how to set up the width tool. First, let's go into sensor settings. As you can see, I have a master image saved already of this rectangle. I'm going to jump to step three, my tool settings, and add a tool. And under the extra one tab, select my width tool. The first thing it'll ask me is if I am checking the width in a horizontal direction or a vertical direction. In my example, I'm going to use horizontal and hit OK. And you can see it gives me this yellow box on my image. This is my tool window. So I'm going to expand my window to look over my target. And you can see it provides two green lines where it sees those two edges and it's going to calculate the width between those edges. So note that you can change the angle of your window and add a mask as needed if you need to block out or ignore a portion within the window. You can do that here. But next you have the edge sensitivity settings. If I go ahead and hit settings, you can see it gives this graph with peaks where it detects edges. So right now it detects an edge going from this white to black, and then it also sees another edge going from black to white on this side of my rectangle. Sees the same thing over here with two edges. So right now my tool is picking up on the two outermost edges where the green line is. However, you can move this to the inside edges if you wanted kind of that inner width of the rectangle. So the edges that are selected will be given this green line, whereas the other edges that are not currently selected but that it detects are yellow. You can click between them here. So I'm gonna go with the two outermost edges and note that you can also raise and lower this sensitivity setting. So if I had another edge that was not quite as intense, you might see a lower peak here and I could lower or raise the sensitivity accordingly. I'm just going to keep that here and select OK. And next you have the limit adjustment. So by default, it gives me an upper limit. And so anything within a matching rate of 80 to 120 would be considered good. Anything outside of that range would be considered bad. Um, but you can adjust that range here and also the scaling setting if you need to go larger. That is really the basic settings of the width tool, but I'm going to hop into the extended functions to show you some of the more advanced settings. First, you have the width extraction method. So if you hit settings, there are three options to choose from. The first one is the master image width. So as my IV3 is running, it will extract a width that is closest to the width of the master image which in my case are these two green lines. If I select outside, it is always going to look from the outside of my tool window looking in and select the first edges that it sees. In this case, that is the same as my master image. But in other cases, if I were looking at these inside edges, for example, um, this would not be the correct setting for me. You can also look from the inside, meaning from the center of the tool window looking out towards the edges, it will detect and pick up the first two edges that it sees, which is that inside width in this case. So those are your three options as far as how the IV3 will determine which edges to pick up when it is running. I'm going to go ahead and stay on my master image width and hit OK. And finally, you have the scaling setting. So if you go ahead and enable this setting, you can actually display a measurement value as opposed to a matching rate. So if in my master image, I know that this part 
is 100 millimeters wide. I can leave my display value at 100. And now you'll notice that my limit adjustment instead of a percentage is also going to be in millimeters. We'll see how this judges other targets in just a minute when we hop into the simulation. But if you want to display a measurement as opposed to a matching rate, go ahead and enable this setting. So now my tool is complete. I'm going to go next to step four and complete my program. And now let's test out how this tool would work on other parts by going into operation simulation. You can see I have several different parts already saved in this program. So as I click on each one, it will apply this tool we just set up to these parts. So here is a good part. And again, because my scaling setting is enabled, I'm getting a millimeter value as opposed to a matching rate. And you can see how this changes for each target. So here, for example, is a no good part. It is much less wide than my master image. And so this would be considered no good. Here's a size kind of in between at 78. And then back to my good master part. So as you can see, this tool is really good for differentiating different widths. Please note it is not a measurement tool, but if you have a couple parts of different widths that are noticeable to the eye, you can use the IV3 to easily differentiate between the different sizes. I hope this video helped explain how to set up and use the width tool on the IV3, but if you have any additional questions, please give our tech team a call at 888-KIANCE-OPTION-2 for tech support. Thanks and have a great day.